I'm taking out Jerome today. Jerome is just down the road from Cottonwood, where we're staying, which is between uh, Jerome and Sedona. So it's a great town to stay in if you want to check out Sedona and Jerome. A little cheaper than Sedona and it's still got all the amenities and all the attractions nearby. So Jerome is a really cute town, always something, uh, always fun to come look at. It's uh, got a bunch of switchbacks, it's an old mining town built on the side of the road. A lot of cute shops and restaurants and a ton of cool old architecture and machinery and uh, it's just a fun fun place to spend a morning or afternoon. So over here you got one of the mines and then just on the other side up there was the Little Daisy Hotel and it's called Little Daisy because this was the Little Daisy Mine and now it's a private residence. Wouldn't you like to go and check that out? The entire top floor is a patio because the roof, it doesn't have a roof on it anymore. So they're using the floor of the top level as their roof. So this is a little daisy mine. And you can see up here where the mine is. And it goes all the way down 1,900 feet. So Great Pyramid, comparing it to the Empire State Building couple other buildings. You can see how how low this goes into the ground. And they have a little glass glass bottom if you want to be brave. Or you can just look all the way down there. Look out below! We're halfway up the mountain that Jerome sits on and you got a great view out here. In the distance, you can see, I'm trying to see it on my camera. You see out here the San Francisco Peaks. Those are in Flagstaff. They're called the San Francisco Peaks because at one point somebody said you could see San Francisco from there, which you can't. <laughs> but that's how they got their name. And then Moving on over a little bit, out here you can see, barely see some formations out at Sedona. And uh, down here, this town, this is Clarkdale. If you went on down a little farther, you would go to Cottonwood on the other side of the hill. And then um, up this mountain is how you get to Jerome. So you go through this little area first. Whoops, my fingers changing the focus. And then down here you can see uh, some of these are uh, century plants, these big tall ones because they bloom every century or something like that. I don't know how true that is but right now a lot of them have their big tall stalks on them.
go turn it. So we're doing a little bit of diagnostic testing today because my truck has a bit of a shimmy at certain speeds and in certain uh, instances. So it's the first time I get to be a passenger in my own truck. Pretty sky today. Feel it right about now. Okay, you feel it? Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that is really bad. Uh, yeah, 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 right? And if you speed up, it'll go away. Actually, do you want to slow down, keep it going, and put it in neutral? Yeah, we'll put it, put it in neutral, remove the possibility that it's in the drivetrain. So it's still kind of happening in neutral, right? Yeah, let me get, let me get it back to the okay. greater level. Yeah, so we definitely feel it slowing down and speeding up. 35 um, miles an hour is when it really... Yeah, when you feel it the most. And when I'm towing, and I, I'm about 65, I can feel it like that, that significantly. Bobby's out front having me roll forward. He's checking probably the alignment or if there's anything diff weird. All right, here we are catching up to speed. Right about 40, it always happens. And uh, I'm so lucky to have you, Bobby, <laughs> to help me out with all this. Well, here's what I think so far. We put it in neutral during the uh, oscillation or whatever you want to call it, and it was still there, so we know it's not in the drivetrain. Uh, it's not in the steering wheel, so I don't think it's front wheel related. I think there's an issue with the dualies, which could be possibly you've slung the weight off one of your dualies. Okay, and yeah. At a certain speed, the harmonics... Uh, is when the, uh, they get off. Yeah. And then would that make sense that when, um, actually, it doesn't matter where I'm towing or not, when I get above 65, it starts shimmying again. Yeah, that's what I want. We're coming up on 65 now. Okay. And the road up here, of course, is pretty bad anyway. We're doing 65 now, and it rides like a diesel toilet so far, I mean. Yeah. But there's still... Still feel it's it. still a shimmy, but it's just faster now. So I think yes. it's the drive. I don't think it's uh, if uh, drive shaft or drive train related. I think it's probably tire related in the back. Okay. Um, but I hope so because that's kind of an easier fix. Yeah, right? we're, and we know the air pressures are good in all the tires. So I'm going to take the. I'm going to check all the lug nuts, and I'm going to okay. just for the heck of it, going to shake the uh, the front okay. wheels and check for bearing okay. wear and. Uh, checking the lug nuts because CarMax, when I bought this, they actually put new tires on the front. And I just want to make sure that, you know, whoever's working there putting the tires on wasn't, you know, skimping on tightening the lugs. So we're under the back of the truck. See, there's the dually. And just checking to make sure we got the weight still there. Nothing's bent. There's no chunks missing or scrubs from it rubbing up against anything. All right, so now we're checking the uh, drive shaft and the U-joints. Just a quick visual. Obviously, we can't know for sure if it's not turning. So after we do the visual, we'll put it up on jacks and, and uh, get that shaft turning to make sure there's no bends. All right, so we're going to inspect the bearings. 
and uh, when you put your hands on the sides and kind of rotate them it should have a teeny bit of play that's just the steering but top and bottom does not have any play. What you want to feel for and listen for is anything that's unusual, if it's making clunking sounds or crunching, or if it doesn't just slowly move with the natural steering on the sides. Then you want to turn it forward and backwards, listen for anything, and then also feel. It should move freely, but you'll hear a little bit of the brakes on the inside, but no cracking, clunking, or anything like that. Well, this kind of confirms what I did not feel on the steering wheel. I'm not getting any play in the wheel on the bearing. I'm not getting any unusual sounds of grinding or anything. And the suspension linkage feels good. So I'm going to say this one's okay. We did do a thorough inspection by pulling the hub and looking at the bearings, but this feels nice and tight. Be sure to check all of them. And you can use your RV's leveling blocks if you need. Useful in so many ways. So we have ruled out front end alignment, we've checked the bearings on the front, we've checked the bearings on the back, and uh, upon inspection of the tires, just visually, we started noticing that the inside dually tires, the inside ones, are rounded on the top, and these outer ones are actually flat, and it's such a difference, so you can see it with your naked eye, and if you take a, a flat edge, you can actually see the height difference that this would be level and so these tires on the outside are, are lower because they don't have that rounded roundedness on the inside as the inside ones do and this is equal on both both tire sets inside tires on both sides round flat so the shimmy or the bouncing that I'm feeling uh, in my truck is not the same as the Dodge Death Wobble that some people have found in certain years of Dodges. This one is more of a, a bounce up and down and it slows and uh, increases the speed with the truck's speed. So, where the Death Wobble would uh, only occur due to certain road conditions. Yeah, and or if you hit a bump. The front end. There's nothing happening in the front end of our truck. Yeah, so not death bubble, which is a really good thing. It's just a bounce. And with these uneven tires, that might be the cause. Might be. See, the straight bar contacts most of the tire all the way across the tire. Put it on this one, and it only touches, the center of the tire touches the straight bar. Let me see this. You know, and if it was a belt separation issue, you would have wear spots, and it, this is consistently rounder in the middle, all the way around. Well, we took it in to get the tires checked because that was something that was visually, uh, we could visually see. And uh, sure enough, Bobby guessed it, those inside tires that were more rounded, those belts are separating. He took them off, showed us some spots inside the the tread where you can see them already beginning to blow out. So just in the nick of time, gonna get some new tires on. <laughs> yeah, some nice new tires, a little bit better brand, and uh, they should be much safer hauling my heavy fifth wheel. All right, I'm at 40. It's feeling a lot better so far. So money well spent, definitely for peace of mind safety and no vibrating man it was just shaking it so much before sweet i'm at 55. solved problem solved and a quite a bit of money later <laughs> which is natural that's part of the lifestyle addressing any sort of vibration especially any kind of tire vibration or anything going on with your tires is possibly one of the most important things that you should take care of immediately. Your tires are the only thing between you and the road and uh, when I was at the tire place the guy told me that the, those tires were going to blow any minute and if I would have towed my uh, fifth wheel before getting those replaced, you know, put it off a little bit longer. Uh, it could have, it could have been absolutely disastrous. So, 
you got to take care of your precious cargo, yourself, your investment, and even other people on the road. So always inspect your tires, make sure you keep up with uh, changing them out when they get too old, know what dates you have on them, and uh, keep an eye on that to uh, just keep you safe, keep everybody safe on the road. Thanks so much for watching. And by the way, if you're a subscriber, go ahead and press, there's a, a bell icon next to the subscribe button. And it looks like some people aren't getting notifications because they don't have the bell icon clicked. So if you want to stay up to date weekly with my videos and what the channel's up to, make sure to press that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't get the regular notifications. Thanks so much for watching.